Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now that we've got all of the electrical and mechanical issues sorted on the 04 545, we need to make this E60 shine again. So a few of the cosmetic issues we'll be addressing in today's video are these yellowed and faded headlights, this cracked front bumper, doing some PDR on a couple dents around the car, and giving the whole car a one-step polish. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. All right, let's go ahead and remove the bumper. So let's pop this trim piece off. Now we should be able to push the bumper in and release it from the bumper brackets. So mine has fog lights and then the parking distance sensors. So I do need to unplug those connections. The connector is under the ductwork on the passenger side, which on my car was not securely fastened. All right, more tools. Let's just remove this connector and I think we should be good. The one for the fog lights. I'm just gonna pop the, the lights out for now. Slide the bumper off now. Now I'll remove the headlights as both of these have damaged housings. It's just a couple of screws from the front, a couple from the top, and then two electrical connectors in the back. I do have a used set of headlights that I will be refinishing before putting them back on the car. All right, now we're gonna refinish the headlights. So first, we're just gonna wash them down with some Windex. Then we'll move to wet sanding. So we've got some water here. And then we'll start with 400 because that's all I have. I would like to start with six or 800, but I don't have that. Then we'll really work it with the thousand grit to get all of those 400 grit scratches out. And then we will move to 1500. After we're done wet sanding, we'll wipe them down with some alcohol, let that completely dry, and then we will spray them with our clear 2K paint. So let's get into it. Okay, now let's start with some 400. If you kind of look at the water that's coming off, it has a little bit of a color to it. Almost like a yellowish, brownish color. And you'll see towards the end, it starts becoming more and more white. Okay, yeah, you see all this is very white now because we're getting into that good plastic. Now on to a thousand. Now we're gonna do 1500, the final step. All right, now we're gonna wipe them down with some alcohol. I like these blue shop towels because they're kind of low lint. All right, now we're gonna let these dry for quite some time, maybe 15 minutes, and we'll come back and spray them. Okay, so I've got this heater running to warm up my can, which is warm and just to keep this area nice and warm as well because it's a little cold in my shop so now we're going to start painting so we're going to do three coats i'm going to do one really light coat a second medium coat 
and a third heavy coat and we're gonna wait about five minutes in between each coat that's coat one we'll let that dry for about five minutes and then we'll come back and put a medium coat too. Okay, now we're going to do the third and final coat. Okay, so I decided to do the fog lights too. Just sanded them up really quick. Did the same method, 400, 1,000, 1,500. I should have showed before. They were super yellow, super foggy. Also because this 2K stuff, once you mix in the hardener, it's only good for like a day. So might as well use it. Okay, so I've got my bumper set up here on the workbench. I just wanted to go over a little bit of what I'll be using to repair this. This is an all-turn plastic welder kit. It comes with staples, the plastic welder, and it did have some plastic rods in it, but I've used those already. So I purchased this other kit from Amazon as well. It's made from the same company. Comes with a ton of staples, more plastic welding rods, and this bundle right here, there's different types of plastic. Now, the type of plastic that our bumper is made out of is polypropylene. As you can see here, it says PP for polypropylene. So the type of rod we will be using is polypropylene. And it also comes with some stainless steel mesh to reinforce, some sanding block, and some aluminum foil tape. Okay, so now what we're gonna try and do is close up this gap as much as possible from the front and then tape it shut. All right, and now for this spot that's missing all the plastic altogether, we'll put a piece of tape over this side and then from the back, we'll just melt plastic into it. All right, so now I'm gonna throw a couple of this style staple in there. You basically set it on the plastic, hit the trigger, let it melt into the plastic, not too far, because you don't want to go all the way through. Release the trigger, let it cool off for, you know, five, ten seconds. And then just with one pull, yank it out. All right, now let's cut all of the little ends of the staples off. Watch out for your eyes. 
They go everywhere. Now you just try and get as close to the bumper as possible. Okay, now I'm gonna fill in the crack with this plastic welding rod and cover up all the staples. So I've got a small torch here. And then I've also got this attachment on the welder. So we're just gonna heat this up and then we'll smash it in with this piece. Not only do I want to melt the plastic welding rod, but I do want to heat up the plastic of the bumper a little bit just so the plastic welding rod melts into it. All right, now that we've got the lower crack repaired over here, we're going to reattach the parking sensors. This one's completely broken off. I'll just melt up some of the plastic that's already there and we'll attach it that way. All right, so this tab right here holds the bumper onto the bumper bracket on the fender. This is the driver's side, and it just seems a little bit weak, probably just from removing the bumper on and off. So I do wanna add a staple from the bottom and then just fill a little bit of plastic right there from the bottom. This clip right here is broken, so I'll do the same thing I'll add a staple right across and then fill in with a little bit of plastic from the bottom. Okay, now I need to reinforce this piece here. You can see it's cracked, and it's also missing plastic tab coming off the end here. So what I did is I traced a piece on the other side that's exactly the same, flipped it over, and got kind of an idea of what I'll need to put over here. I also cut off a piece of the bumper in an area that doesn't matter and I'll use that to try and build a small piece here. Let's first fix this with a few staples and some plastic welding rod, and then we will try and build that piece off the end.
Okay, I think that looks pretty good from this side. I will flip it over and see what it looks from the other side. But if everything looks good, I think we're done with the bumper. I'm swapping over two brackets from the original headlights that were broken on the ones that I refinished. They just clip on and off. As I was working on the headlights, swapping over the brackets, I noticed a lot of wires that were missing insulation, so I'll need to take care of that now. I'll wrap all the wires with electrical tape and then use a little bit of hot glue to secure everything to the electrical connector. Okay, here is the finished product. I've covered up every single wire all, to, all the way back to where it's not broken anymore. Now I'll install the headlights. I'm working on the passenger side here. There's two electrical connectors in the back and then two screws on the top and two in the front. All right, they're both mounted up and working properly. And I've got to say, these things look almost brand new. All right, now it's time to put the bumper back on, but this harness for some reason isn't matching up to this reinforcement bar. There should be a couple of holes like this one where these clips can pop into. So maybe this reinforcement bar was off of a different car, but I'm just gonna drill a couple of holes where this harness should match up to the reinforcement bar so I can attach the harness. Here. First though, I wanna wrap it with some electrical tape because all of this stuff is just falling apart. Okay, now let's set our bumper up here. Originally, the bumper was missing the four that come up through the bottom here, but I found some that'll fit. Okay, now we'll mount the fog lights back in. Okay, now let's get all this duct work put back together. It's the vent that feeds the brakes. Let's get all the connectors connected. Just the one for the parking sensors. Put this fog light back in. Okay, now I just need to find a couple of screws for this and this side will be done. Okay, this side is done. Okay, we can pop this trim piece back in.
Okay, I got the trim piece back in. You see the little crack here. It's not that noticeable compared to what it was before. And now we need to put the five or so screws in from the top. So I'm gonna lower the car a little. All right, now let's put this strip back on. Okay, next I'll be installing the windshield washer fill tube and I need to remove the air box. I should have done this with the bumper and the headlight out. I would have been able to have access, but now I'll need to remove the intake. So let's unclip these clips. On there, up here, on there, there. Yeah. Wow, this thing has two filters? That's interesting. That's gotta be restrictive. Probably change that, it's not too bad though. Okay, now we've got a couple of E10s here. Down inside, in the intake tube, there's a little clip. All right, and if you look down in here, this is the washer fluid reservoir, and this is the inlet right here, and the hose just comes up off of there. So let's go grab the hose. Okay, so here it is. It looks like it just clicks in in the bottom. There's an O-ring and then a couple of tabs, and then there is one bolt up here on the top. So it goes in right through there into the into the frame. You feed it down through here inside. You gotta like get your fingers in some of these holes, push it down, and it's gonna come out somewhere down around there and then into the bottle. So you gotta feed it all through the inside of this out through the top. Okay, got it all routed in there. There it is. All right, now let's just get all of the air filter housing put back in. Okay, done. Okay, next we're gonna be replacing this rear glass rubber seal. This one's completely deteriorated. We've got a new one. So the first thing we need to do is pull this one out. It's literally just sitting there. There's nothing holding it in anymore. I mean, look at that. There's nothing left of the rubber, it's just the little aluminum frame. Start with this corner, and you just want to shove it down in there.
All right, so if you lift this roof rail cover off, you can shove this piece of the seal underneath and it looks a lot more factory. So I'm just gonna pry this cover up a little bit and then shove the rubber underneath it and then snap it back down. There we go. Very factory. Another thing I'm going to do is change these little marker lights. I got these little LEDs. They have 3M tape on the back. So all you have to do, this is spring loaded. So you push the marker light back and then the front should pop out. All right, now I'm just gonna clean this up a little bit with some alcohol. Peel the sticker backer off. The PDR guy will also be removing this dent here, so I'm going to take the trunk liner off to get that out of his way. Look at that. Hidden carpet screws. I think they're actually Phillips. All right, everyone, we're here at my friend Muta's shop, Dentless in Inglewood, California. He's gonna be doing some PDR on this dent right here on the truck. So let's get into it. Yeah, I'm like pretty happy with it. Yeah, that's good. All right, so now I'm gonna polish the car. I'm just gonna do a quick one-step finishing polish 
the paint isn't that bad. It's not great, but I just want to make it nice and shiny and pop again. I'm not trying to get rid of all the scratches. So we're just going to do a one step polish. I have already washed the car, but it's been sitting in the shop for quite some time. So I'm just going to wipe it down with some quick detailer. Then we'll clay bar it and start to polish. So let's get into it. All right, everyone, that's gonna do it for today's video. We took care of those faded headlights, that cracked front bumper, the dent in the trunk, and gave the car a nice polish. We are about 90% done with this project, and I can't wait to get it out in the sun and do a reveal video for everyone. So thank you all for watching, and if you haven't already, please hit that like, subscribe, and notification button and I'll see you all in the next video.